So Penguin Zero is not really known for talking about politics, but it looks like he decided to talk about politics here. He released a video called talking about a serious topic and based on the thumbnail, I think it's going to be about mass shooting. So it's going to be very interesting because I've actually done a video about mass shootings talking about how they're not, inc they're not incredibly common at all. They don't happen super often. Um, they're definitely not the, the major cause of gun deaths uh, and they're highly overrepresented. So it's very overhyped in the media. The media is making this out to be a bigger problem than it actually is. That said, every time one of these instances does happen, they are very tragic. So, um, yeah, let's see what Penguin Zero's take is on this, because uh, it'll be interesting to see if he goes with the more emotional or, like, current thing take on gun violence, where it's like, oh, we got to regulate all the guns. Um, or if he goes to the more statistical thing, where it's like, you know what? Way more people are doing IRL rage quits with handguns than doing mass shootings with AR-15s. Um, yeah, so it'll be interesting to see... Uh, what do you have to say on this? This is one of those very rare, serious videos I make about a situation that I feel is just very important to cover. Last night in Ybor, which is a place that's close to where we live here in Tampa, there was a shooting that left two dead in 16 to 18. The reports are varying. In I didn't even know this was in Florida. I assumed that this was about the one uh, in uh, Maine. I think there was a mass shooting in Maine. I assume that that's what this was about. But it's interesting, uh, only two people dead, but 18 injured. I think that that uh, hits the threshold of being a mass shooting. Injured. It started as an altercation between people that escalated into guns being drawn and fired, and 16 to 18 people were caught in the crossfire. It wasn't a planned mass shooting. It was a fight that turned into a mass shooting, basically. There's tons of footage from this, including the start of the shooting. I'm clearly not going to show you any of that. And unfortunately, myself and my friends were actually there last night when it happened. Like, what? Oh, wow. Yo. Yo, okay, I can see now. I can see now why he's talking about this, because... People like Penguin Zero usually don't talk about politics, but if, if it affects them in their daily lives, it's completely understandable that they would want to talk about this subject. For most people in Tampa, we went down to Ebor to party for Halloween. The shooting happened around 3 a.m. and most of us were still out at that time. Mm. Half of us were still in a club, like myself. Some of us had just started going home, and then one of our friends, Peyton, was actually walking on 7th Avenue, which is where the shooting took place. She said Whoa. she was only a couple blocks away and actually saw the shooting happen. She then called Caleb, who was with me at the club, and he could hear the gunshots in the background Yo. as she was trying to warn us to stay inside and not go out under any circumstances. It's a horrifying nightmare. She mentioned she also no, saw thanks. some of the bodies, and I can't even imagine what she must be feeling about the situation that unfolded in front of her. Most of you know I have quite a few irrational fears, like flying. But one fear I have that I don't think is irrational or weird, and probably plenty of you who are also American have a fear of, is mass shootings. It doesn't seem like they're that uncommon anymore. So to have one actually happen where we were is indescribably terrible. And, and by the way, again, they're not like super, super common. If you take it to account, like per capita and everything like that, um, they do definitely happen way more often than they should, though. And my heart absolutely breaks for anyone that was involved in the situation. It's unimaginable. The club we were at is mm. a couple minutes walk away from where the shooting took place. So we were far enough away that we weren't in danger, but we were close enough that when we left, we could see where the cops and the whole thing had taken place because it's just one street and you can just see down there. It's an extremely sad situation. The two deceased victims were a 14 year old and a 22 year old. It's yo dude. And that's bro. That's like, that's crazy young to die from something like this too. Like that, that's just awful. Uh, and John says what, what happened in my state a few months ago. Yeah. Like the ones that hit the news only generally happen like maybe once a year, like, or maybe a few times in the, a, a year, but in the summertime, but there are actually mass shootings that happen. I think roughly every one to three or four days. If I'm, not, if I'm not mistaken, don't quote me on that. But there's a whole Wikipedia page you can go to see every single mass shooting. Most of them actually don't have a lot of casualties, um, <clears throat> but a fair amount of injuries. Uh, you'll you'll see that very often. 
But I think that most shootings, though, are like, aren't they like one on one v ones? Like, I'm I don't know if they're mass shootings usually. So fucking infuriating <clears throat> to not feel safe anymore out in public because you never know when it might just turn into a mass shooting because two people got upset. And also, I will say this to the to the right wingers though. <clears throat> I will say this to the right wingers who are like, oh. No, buy a gun, get a gun. I agree, right? Go get a gun for your safety. But remember, this is the dude who said that's a mag, not a clip. This is the guy who had like what, like an AR-15, a rifle or something in his home, and he showed it off in his reaction video to Sneeko. This dude be strapped. I'm sure he has multiple guns, and he still feels unsafe. So I will say, just because you have a gun doesn't mean that you're going to be immune from gun violence. It means you have a chance to fight back, but it doesn't mean that you're completely safe. So while the right certainly is correct to be like, oh yeah, you know, stay strapped so you're not caught lacking. Like, it also makes sense to be afraid for your safety regardless, especially if you're in a violent era area. And, you know, Florida man lives in Florida. So, you know, there is a reason for some fear there. Just senseless gun violence over fucking nothing. It is horrifying. It's beyond scary. And at the time, all we knew is what Peyton told us. But when we got into our Uber and were heading home and we all got back safely, that's when we started to see clips of what exactly happened. And one of the clips that we saw, probably the biggest clip that we saw, came from a live streamer who was there. <laughs> And that's been, I can't imagine being in this scenario and like laughing, like legit. Maybe he didn't understand the situation, but he is in a scenario where there could have, could very easily have been mass casualties. And he's like, oh, 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 like I am, yo, my gasps have been flabbered. Like, I don't understand how you could have this attitude in a scenario where he, the dude could have could have been dropped like in one millisecond and he's over here laughing as he's dressed up as like one of the Teletubbies or, or whoever he's dressed up as like that's that's crazy crazy and uh jot in the chat said i have lost one of my friends to gun violence sadly yeah no not to minimize make no mistake i'm not trying to minimize um the impact of of gun violence and i i am definitely sorry that you uh you lost a friend to uh to gun violence because that's just that's just awful um but i do want to counter the media narrative that this is like some sort of like massive epidemic that's like plaguing every single um you know member of american society that itself is not true again does not make any situation that happens any less tragic they're all tragic incidents as is this you know this is probably not going to be the easiest thing for anyone to watch really I can imagine. I can imagine. It's a good thing. It looks like there were. It looks like there was a fire truck there. So yeah, that looks like a fire truck. So hopefully, um, you know, people were attended to very quickly, and, and that saved some lives. Dude's laughing. I can't imagine. I can't. I can't imagine this mindset. I can't imagine this. I don't understand. How could you laugh while you're in the midst of a mass shooting? I, I, I don't get it. <laughs> the streamer caught a lot of shit for this because he is heard audibly belly laughing about yeah, the situation. I, I and you can see him smiling ear to ear here, looking like he just got told the best joke in the world while also being tickled during a shooting. He has made a statement about this. He was replying to someone who gave him the benefit of the doubt, saying, I don't think enough people know that in traumatic situations, people often react in ways that people who are uninvolved would see as inappropriate. This is how the brain works to protect us in moments of distress. That's a, it's, that's a good point. It's a good point. To which he said, also, I was very intoxicated. As I said before, I hope everyone made it out safe, and I would never intentionally laugh at a situation like this. 
I don't think there's enough alcohol in the world to make you drunk enough to laugh during a mass shooting, but what they're describing here about laughing during traumatic situations is a real phenomenon. I am familiar with that. I've seen that before when studying in college. It's something mm -hmm. we went over, and I don't necessarily know if I believe him that that's what happened, because he seemed extremely excited, almost celebrating that he was capturing these moments on his stream. Maybe yeah. he viewed it as content, or perhaps... It could just be bad Twitch clout brain, to be honest. It could just be like, yo, I, ca I captured this moment on stream, I'm gonna go viral. Like, that's certainly possible. Not sure that that's the case, but it's certainly possible. A big break knowing his stream would be shared around in the news about this, I don't really know. But there is something still very off-putting about the way he responds to it, but I'm just going to go ahead and also give him the benefit of the doubt that perhaps this really is just how he responds to tra traumatic situations like this. But he did, a couple hours after this happened, make this tweet where he was replying to a news organization that posted his footage talking about the shooting in Ebor, and he said, Yo, no props is crazy, not gonna lie, but hope everyone in the situation made it out safe. And then someone in the comments called him out, saying, So someone said, props, this ain't no game, what the fuck? And then he said, not the gun, props like it's my video, and I ain't get credit. This is a very weird response. Oh, this is, this is, this is, this is the clout game. This is, this is uh, all about the clout. That's, that's wild. That's wild. In my opinion here, because it seems like the first thing on his mind is getting credit for them using that footage, which to me screams that he wants the attention from being yeah. the one to capture Pretty these much. moments. I feel like if his primary concern was the safety of all those around them and wishing them well that they got out safely, that would have been his main statement instead of leading with, it's crazy that I didn't get props, not gonna lie. Like, and also, like, if you want to get attention, how thirsty do you have to be in order to seek negative attention? Right? Like, you have to know that laughing and making jokes about a mass shooting is gonna get you negative attention. As it should. It should very much get you negative attention. But, like, if you, what you want is attention, why not do something positive, right? Why not just, like, give a bunch of money to the victims of the shooting and be like, oh, look at how good I am. I'm, I'm giving people money. I'm helping them with their health care because the American health care system is broken and it sucks. Like, that, but that's not what he did, though. Like, that, to me, really rubs me the wrong way. But again, I, I'm not a psychologist. I'm not going to pretend that I can read his mind. I'm also not trying to direct any harassment his way. This isn't, like, the focus of the video or anything, but these were the clips that we started to see right after the fact, and all of us were understandably like disturbed by what happened and then also seeing someone laughing during it was extremely concerning so I did want to talk about just that for a moment I have made quite a few videos talking about how I believe there's a lot of influencers out there that just literally don't value human life and they just view the people around them as props hmm. I've made the joke in the past that some of these content creators live by the motto life is temporary clout is forever so they'll do anything in That's pursuit crazy. of clout including perhaps using a shooting. At especially because clout ain't forever. Like, there's so many people who died forgotten, so like... As a marketing tool to promote <clears> their <throat> stream. I hope that's not the case here. I'm not familiar with the streamer, so I can't really speak to their character or anything. I hope this is just one of those, like, defense mechanisms in a traumatic situation where, unfortunately, he laughs during it, and it's not him viewing it as some kind of, like you know, piece of content for his stream. But anyway, I'd like to state the obvious real quick, that it genuinely feels unsafe leaving the house. Every time you walk out the front door, it feels like you're taking an extreme risk in a dangerous environment. Even just going somewhere to have fun with your friends can instantly turn into the worst night of your life that changes everything forever. Because I, I, I will say this. <clears throat> this, is, this is partially due to just, like, media-fueled hysteria when it comes to these sorts of things. Now, I know, like, if you live in, like... Um, you know, this city or like Chicago or, you know, a place like that, New York, I guess, you know, Jot said in the chat, you, uh, you know, um, New York, if you live in a place like that, I could completely understand feeling like, you know, you gotta, um, keep your head on a swivel to make sure you're not going to get like popped in the back of the head. Um, but at the same time, like for the majority of people who don't live near any of these um, incidents who have a very low chance of getting caught in a mass shooting scenario, they're still probably going to feel scared. You know, we just are on the heels of the main shooting, but it's, it's for the most part, it's media hysteria. Um, because, you know, 
there's gonna be people in the I know people who live in the boondocks right now who might be watching watching all the news coverage of Maine. You're like, oh, oh, gun violence is so prevalent as they walk outside and you know they see like 500 times more ears of corn outside um, growing in the middle of America than like yo know, heads on top of shoulders, right? People living nearby. Um, like you're gonna have people in like densely populated lands looking over their shoulder, like, oh, mass shootings, like. Or people in like very safe neighborhoods being like, oh, it can happen anywhere. Like as they as they walk to and fro within their gated community. Like it, when it comes to mass shootings and, and violence of this sort, it some of it is certainly depends on the demographics, the income level of the folks uh you know, where you live. But <clears throat> I think this idea that it can happen anywhere, um, it's technically true, but it's not likely that it will happen. Um, you know, at every, any given moment in any given second. Um, that said, this is no excuse to be ignorant. Certainly walk around and, you know, keep your eye out on your surroundings. Don't just glue your eyes to your phone um, and think that everything's going to be Gucci um, just because mass shootings are rare. They can happen all the time, especially like if you're in a densely populated area. I would say that like, you know, you don't completely know as many of the people around you. It's different if you had a family cook at night. Hey, I know some of y'all probably have crazy families, so, you know, keeping your hand on a swivel is certainly uh, warranted at, like, Thanksgiving dinner or whatever. I, I'll grant you that. But, you know, you know, stay alert when you're in public. But if you're not around a lot of people, then there aren't going to be as many, you know, there's not going to be as much of a likelihood that something like this is going to happen to you. Like, the, the last mass shootings that we had, the main one was at a bowling alley. There was one that was in a church. Um, those are all very uh, largely populated areas, right? So just things to keep in mind. Don't watch this video um, and then be like, oh, I got to be scared to leave the house and I'm going to be scared to walk outside and go to work. Um, but don't also be like, oh, pff, I'll never get shot. Like, it's not a bad idea to have a gun or two around just to be able to defend yourself. You know, it is good practice, you know, whenever you're, you know, at the, at the mall or going to go see a movie or at a baseball game to look and check the exits. Um, you know, do, do basic safety things. Don't act like your life is for granted. Don't act like you'll never get shot, but also don't act like, you know, you're going to die in like 60 seconds and then like, just like start sweating profusely. Like, the world is not as dangerous as the news would like us to believe. The news just wants us to think that we're all going to die in a second because then we'll turn on CNN and keep our eyes glued to the screen as they show the apocalypse. That's like what they're hoping for. Because two strangers just randomly start shooting each other over nothing and catching innocent people in the crossfire. One thing that I think is also <coughs> important if you're not familiar with Ebor is every single night in Ebor, well, at least on the weekends when I've been, they have like 50, at least 50 officers roaming the streets with their patrol cars. Wow. Some of them are even on horseback as well. And still, this happened. Even with all of that, this shooting happened in front of like 50 officers being there. Wow. Even with a strong police presence, they couldn't prevent 16 to 18 people getting injured in a shooting and two people dying from it. Hmm. So there is a super, super strong police presence in that area where this shooting took place and there was still nothing they could do to prevent it or stop the loss of life in a random shooting like this. And that, and that is an interesting point because one of the right-wing narratives is all you got to do is just have a bunch of cops everywhere um, and you'll fix the problem. Entirely true. I do think that you might prevent some of these casualties, at least to an extent, right? You, you can have a cop come in and put a shooter down. But, um, you know, you're not going to be able to stop every incident, especially in a sparsely populated area like this. Like, what, you're going to have a cop shoot through a crowd at a, at a mass shooter? Like, no. It just happens too quick, and it is so fucking scary. But anyway, I don't want to focus on this for too long. My heart goes out to everyone that was affected by this, and my best wishes with the families of the deceased. That's about it. So yeah. Yeah. I feel I feel hypocritical for talking about politics at every turn of this video, but I'm glad no one politicized. Well, I'm glad he didn't politicize this. Um. He said this is the greatest problem of all time. No, bro, bro. <laughs> We're we're in an era where people okay hold on I could I could rail on and on about the problems of society but this is not the greatest problem of all time it's it's, it's just not it's just not doesn't like poor dieting kill more people than mass shootings it's like isn't that the case like McDonald's probably kills more people 
than Armalite or whoever whoever designs those AR-15s. But yes, this is what caught my eye too. Uh, Ten Tative in the in the comment section said the fact that a ten, a fourteen year old became a casualty because of an argument between two grown men is the saddest part. That part is just like because whenever it comes to these things, it's easy to just go straight up like politics brain, right? But when you, I feel like when you see like someone like young or like a kid or a baby getting killed in situations like this, it's just like. And maybe it's just because I'm pro-life, and so I, I'm especially sensitive to, like, when younger people pass away prematurely over things that are easily preventable, um, or things that, like, no one should ever do. <sighs> but yeah, no, it's it's awful. And unfortunately, I think that this scenario highlights, you know, the fact that right-wing solutions... Um, Right-wing solutions are not going to fix every single one of these instances. Because there were multiple factors about this situation that, uh, you know, a right-winger could could say, oh, you should do this to fix mass shootings. Like, oh, just have more police. There were 50 police officers there. Oh, just have people strapped there. There were probably plenty of people armed there. Um, and it wasn't enough to prevent this from becoming a mass shooting. So, yeah. I mean, this doesn't invalidate the right-wing arguments i would say but i think it's important to take into account that no matter what measures you do to try to solve this problem you know it's kind of like the poor we will always have it with us to an extent so we can we can do um what we can to try to mitigate these issues but it's not gonna get 100 percent fixed i don't think uh, and at least not by purely right-wing um responses or like the stereotypical right-wing responses so you know, there's no one size fits all solution to the shooting issue. Um, but yeah, hopefully, you know, we as a society come together and find like a reasonable bipartisan solution to this. People want to complain. They're like, oh, this problem's not getting solved because the politicians don't care. No, politicians do care, but they're fighting over what the solution is. Some people think that the cause is guns. Some people think it's other causes, such as like mental health, um, poverty, other issues. So People trying to approach this with different angles. Uh, hopefully, people find some congruency and uh, in enough, uh, you know, enough common ground to come to a solution to this. Because while this is certainly not the biggest issue that America faces, I think that it is one that certainly needs to be addressed. Uh, so hopefully, you know, some politicians come together, um, yeah, find some common ground, and they get a good solution for this. Now, <laughs> some people might be like, "Oh, you know, you're crazy for thinking that that this will." Um, get solved quickly or soon or whatever, but I don't know. It's not bad to hope. It's not bad to pray and, um, you know, wish for things to get better.